Nigeria is a great country. It is our collective responsibility to make the country greater. Shun corruption for a better Nigeria. Hello and welcome to the program, The Eagle. My name is Aisha Gambari. I am Aisha Mohammed. Thank you for joining us as we bring you updates of activities within the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. On the program today, Acting Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, has expressed the readiness of the Commission to assist the Cameroonian government in the area of asset tracking and recovery. Just as the Commission, with a view to effectively tackle corruption in Nigeria, reaffirmed its readiness to strengthen relationship with Microsoft Nigeria Limited. Also today is a special feature on the challenges of cameramen face in getting pictures of accused persons in court. And from court updates, we'll bring you reports on the proceedings in the trial of former governor of Nasarawa State, Aliyu Akwe Doma, who was arraigned alongside two others as the commission closes its money laundering case against them. Please stay with us as we take our first break today. The program continues shortly. Don't go away. Imagine a society where everything works. Durable road networks, stable electricity supply, portable water, well-equipped and functional healthcare facilities, quality education for all, affordable housing schemes, social security benefits, job creation and a lot more that makes life comfortable to live. That is an ideal society. We can only achieve these if we all play our part. Say no to corruption to enjoy these benefits. Kill corruption to save Nigeria. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Welcome back. We begin today with the visit of the Cameroonian officials to the EFCC head office in Abuja. Acting Chairman of the Commission, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, who received the delegation, expressed the readiness of the Commission to assist the Cameroonian government in the area of asset tracking and recovery. Golden Agu has more. Magu, while thanking the five-man delegation for choosing the EFCC as a partner in recovering looted funds, said the Commission will be willing to exchange ideas and experiences with Cameroon in necessary areas. I just want us to interact in the interaction, let us share ideas, you know, how we can move the, both the two organizations uh, we move forward. It doesn't mean uh, we have our strengths and we have our weaknesses. Uh, so it's, it's just going to be a kind of an exchange of ideas. We will take you around, they will brief you. Earlier, the leader of the delegation, Ase Joseph Malego, stated that the success story of the commission had traveled far and wide through different media. Malego said the activities of the commission are laudable and the Cameroonian government is happy to identify with the success stories. He commended President Muhammad Buhari and the Mago-led EFCC for the efforts in ridding Nigeria of corruption, adding that the actions of the commission is what endeared Cameroon to Nigeria. The President of the Republic of Cameroon delegated this team to come here and share the Nigerian experience. I want to say, if press report is anything to go by, your action is quite laudable and commendable. He also appealed to the EFCC boards to share his experience in the areas of asset tracing, freezing and recovery, as well as how the recovered assets were being plowed back into the country's economy. 
In a related development, the acting chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Mago, has reaffirmed the Commission's preparedness to strengthen relationship with Microsoft Nigeria Limited, with a view to effectively tackle corruption in Nigeria. Mago gave the assurance while receiving the country's representative and managing director of Microsoft Nigeria Limited, Kabelo Makwane, who was at the Commission's head office in Abuja on a court visit. The EFCC boss, who stressed the importance of the use of modern technology in fighting all shades of graft, said the Commission will continue to work with Microsoft for mutual interest. Makwane, who led the delegation, lauded the renewed vigor deposed by the EFCC in fighting corruption in Nigeria. He said they were the Commission to rekindle their friendship with the EFCC and to participate fully in protecting its intellectual properties and rights. While acknowledging the readiness of the anti-graft agency to partner with his organization, Makwane said Microsoft has enjoyed very productive and fruitful relationship with the EFCC in the time past. We are no stranger to, to the EFCC. Uh, we've been working and we've enjoyed uh, a very uh, productive, uh, fruitful relationship in, in times gone by. Uh, but I thought it's uh, necessary and hence why I've been uh, forging on to make sure that we at least uh, you know, come and, uh, and, and uh, meet you here, uh, pay our courtesy uh, to meet you as the as the not so newly appointed uh, chairman anymore. Uh, I think you've been on seat uh, for some time. And also to take the opportunity to commend you and the organization with a very noble and, uh, and courageous work that you've been undertaking, uh, you know, in, inside the country, through and out Nigeria here. Uh, in really championing uh, the mandate of uh, our dear esteemed president, uh, uh, you know, around the areas of anti-corruption and economic financial integrity. In his company were other members of the Microsoft team in Nigeria. Golden Ago, reporting for The Eagle. Glad to have you back. Next is our special report. The report showcases the many challenges faced by the EFCC cameraman in getting pictures of accused persons in court. Most of the accused persons, out of shame, put up different antics to avoid their faces being captured. But despite the drama, our cameramen succeed in winning the hide-and-seek game. This report was written by Suleiman Babatunde Gafar and presented by Rolake Odofin Jolayemi. Over to you, Rolake. By all standards, Air Vice Marshal Ulutayo Ubuntu Imbo has reason to thank his stars. Providence, no doubt, has been most kind to him having placed him above some mortals in life. However, it is simply inconceivable why a man of his status would allegedly involve in a deed that is capable of rubbishing his integrity. Ogunto Imbo, while being the Chief of Training and Operations, Nigerian Air Force, allegedly collected 166 million naira as gratification from a contractor with the Nigerian Air Force, Societe de Equipment International, Nigeria Limited. The Act contravenes Section 17A of the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Act 2000 and punishable under Section 17C of the same Act. Perhaps if he didn't realize the damage that greed could bring upon him, he knew better recently when he was dragged by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, before Justice Olukayo D. A. Adeni of the Federal Capital Territory High Court sitting in Apo, Abuja on a one-count charge bordering on bribery. Aware that his shameful act was being brought to the open, he played hide-and-seek with our cameraman while he was being led to the court. Indeed, to say that he put up all sorts of imaginable drama to escape the lenses of a camera is to put it mildly. In one of the scenes, he lowered his head and attempted to cover his face with his left palm, thereby making it difficult for the cameraman to capture his image. In another strange posture, he pretended to be thirsty and quickly grabbed a bottle of chilled table water with which he also tried to cover his face and at the same time he acted to be having a phone conversation while leaving a cameraman sweating it out to capture his face.
in another display of comedy, Abumiri Joseph Osagi, a Deputy Director, Regional Tax Office, Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, and Jamila Ojora enjoy each other's company. They want all the comforts of life and love to live big, so they often strategize to continuously remain relevant in the society. They had been at the game for a while, but not many knew the secret behind their closeness. However, their hitherto kept secret became public knowledge on March 10, 2016. For the duo, the game was up. On that day, there was a twist to their stories, and they could only wish that the ground would open up and swallow them. Nemesis seemed to have caught up with them when they were arraigned by the commission before Justice O.O. Goodluck of the FCT High Court sitting in Meitama, Abuja on a two-count charge bordering on criminal conspiracy and receipt of gratification to the tune of 5 million naira. Shortly before his arraignment inside the courtroom, Osage cleverly covered his face with his mobile phone when he sighted a cameraman. But why, you may ask, would a grown-up want to hide behind a finger, so to say? Shamefully, when he realized that the phone could not serve as a bulwark against the aggression of a cameraman, he, like his co-traveler on the road of infamy, completely lowered his head, which was later encased between his arms. Henry Alade is young and fashionable. Indeed, he may also pass for a model, particularly because of his attractive physique. But when the bubbly managing director, Impact Direct Strategies and Execution Limited, stepped out on Monday, October 12, 2015, he was visibly agitated. Sadly, no one around him could have imagined the war ravaging his heart, soul and body that day. As the storm of shame was gathering over his head, he felt so ashamed to face the world after allegedly defrauding a new generation bank of the sum of 180 million naira. A few minutes before he was docked by the commission before Justice Lawal Akapu of the Lagos State High Court sitting in Ikeja, Lagos, on an eight-count charge bordering on stealing, obtaining money by false pretense, and forgery, his inaction and action pointed to one thing, a visibly embarrassed man who didn't want to be easily identified with his crime. Consequently, for several minutes, he ducked, bent his head, and fixed his gaze on the floor, all in a bid to escape being photographed. In fact, he couldn't be persuaded to raise his head. As a Christian, Chief Adekunle Ominikun Shubowali must have come across a number of verses in the Bible that frown against any act of indiscipline. He must have also listened to his pastor at different times in church, urging Christian faithfuls to shun fraud and other vices. But it seems the Shubowali has never been moved either by the biblical injunction or by his pastor's homily. To him, the end justifies the means. In Shobowale's thought, the day of reckoning only exists in the realm of spirituality. As a result, he threw caution to the winds when he allegedly sold three acres of land located at Alahu village off Leki Ekbe Expressway, Lagos, to one Daniel Obiajuju Mwakama for over 10 million naira. Faced with the result of his alleged wrongdoing, Shobowale did everything humanly possible to escape the lens of a camera before he was arraigned before Justice Kudirat Abike Jose of the Lagos State High Court sitting in Ikeja, Lagos on a five-count charge bordering on obtaining money by false pretense. But it was too late. His right hand, which he used to cover his face, couldn't do the magic. He was gripped by shame, and he couldn't beat a smart cameraman to the game. On April 7, 2016, five staff of Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, NAMA, were arraigned by the Commission before Justice Kwewumi Babs of the Federal High Court, Lagos, on a 21-count charge of conspiracy, forgery, and money laundering to the tune of about 7 billion naira. The accused persons are Ibrahim Abdul Salam, Managing Director, Nnamdi Udo, a former Managing Director still at large, Adegorite Ulumuiwa, General Manager, Procurement, Agbolade Shegun, 
General Manager Finance, Clara Alici, Director Finance, Joy Ayodili Adigurite, Randville Investment Limited, and Molteng Travel and Tours. However, without recourse to exaggeration, Abdul Salam and his cohorts on the day of the arraignment appeared like travelers who were returning home to the warm embrace of their loved ones. But buried the thought. There was more to the luggage held tightly in their hands. They seemed to have agreed on a ploy to escape the lens of our camera. The luggage they believed could be used as a shield to cover their faces against the harassment of our cameraman. So, while one woman covered her face with a travel bag, another used her scarf as a shield against a camera lens. Yet, one of the male suspects literally sought refuge in a newspaper, which he used to cover his face. Could Daniel Onyebuchi and Ikai be searching for? As he momentarily stood transfixed in the premises of the FCT High Court Apo Abuja on Tuesday, February 16, 2016, you wonder if he was grieving over a missing car key or a purse. Except you knew why he caught that image, you probably would take pity on him. But it was obvious that he was overwhelmed by the shame of being photographed when he was being arraigned by the commission before Justice C.S. Origi on a six-count charge bordering on false pretense, criminal conspiracy, and forgery. It was a pitiable sight on June 2, 2015, when 10 officials of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, and other banks were herded by operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to the premises of the Federal High Court sitting in Ibadan, or your state, over an alleged circulation of mutilated bank currencies worth 8 billion naira. The suspects, who were arraigned in three batches, were accused of conspiracy as well as diversion and stealing of mutilated currencies and replacing them with newspaper cottons. While awaiting the commencement of the day's proceedings before Justice Ayo Emmanuel, our cameraman made frantic efforts to catch their images. His task was not made any easy, as the suspects would not cooperate in any way. While some closed their eyes, pretending to be praying, a particular female suspect barred a cameraman from capturing her image as she looked down and covered her face with her head tie. Thank you, Rolake, for that report. Next on the program is our court update as the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, closes its case against former Governor of Nasarawa State, Aliu Akwe Doma. Golden Agu has this and other reports. Akwe Doma, alongside Timothy Anthony Anjide, a former secretary to the state government, and Dauda Egwa, a former accountant general, are being prosecuted by the EFCC on a 10-count charge bordering on money laundering and financial crimes. The accused persons between January 2007 and December 2009 allegedly conspired and fraudulently laundered state funds to the tune of 8 billion naira, an offence contrary to Section 14, Subsection 1A of the Money Laundering Prohibition Act 2004 and punishable under Section 14, Subsection 1 of the same act. At the last hearing of the case, a prosecuting witness, Abdul Razak Salau, an operative with the EFCC, told the court how he met the defendants following different petitions and intelligence reports received by the commission. Led in evidence by Kemi Pinheiro SAN, Salau told the court that investigation was carried out to establish the veracity of the allegations against the defendants. He said, and I quote, during investigation, the team saw movement of funds from the state government account to the secretary to the state government. Upon this discovery, we invited some of the state officials to give explanations as to the purpose of such transfers. In the course of the investigation, 
Having analyzed the account and discovered that several funds were released, officials in charge of finances were asked to provide payment vouchers relating to the release of such funds. Among the vouchers released were those marked special releases. When the team asked Kassa about the purpose of such releases, he said he could not give explanations. He said that those releases were done on the instruction of the Secretary of State Government. These special releases had no approval and no supporting documents to show the purpose for which the huge sums were meant for. End of quote. He further stated that the third defendant confirmed that monies were released upon receiving mere phone calls. In his words, we discovered that monies were released and were tagged emergencies. Most of these releases were without approval. Dauda Egwa in his statement confirmed that those monies were released on mere phone calls received from the former governor, Aliyu Akwedoma. It was discovered that monies were released without memos or approvals, as officials in charge of finance were only called on the phone to release such monies on emergency. So it was not an error of classification. They were also released based on verbal instructions from the governor. End of quotes. Statements of the first, second and third defendants were presented to the court and were all admitted into evidence. The case has been adjourned to November 28, 29, 30 and December 1, 2016 for continuation of trial. Still on court matters, in line with its relentless efforts to bring in corrupt public officers to book, the EFCC arraigned Air Vice Marshal Rufus A. Odruau, a former Director of Operations, Nigeria Air Force, before Justice M. B. Idris of the Federal Capital Territory High Court sitting in Apo, Abuja, on a two-count charge bordering on bribery to the tune of 40 million naira. Odruau, while being the Director of Operations, Nigerian Air Force, had in March 2015 allegedly collected the said sum and a Range Rover Sport Utility Vehicle as gratification from one Hima Abubakar of Societe de Equipment International Nigerian Limited, a contractor with NAF. The offense contravenes Section 17, Subsection A of the Independence, Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Act 2000 and is punishable under Section 17C of the same act. The accused person pleaded not guilty to the charges when they were read to him. In view of his plea, the prosecution counsel, Francis A. Jibo, asked the court for a trial date. Responding, the defense counsel, R.A. Ojabo, urged the court to grant the accused person bail on self-recognizance. Having listened to both counsel, Justice Idris granted the accused person bail in the sum of 10 million naira with one surety in like sum. The surety must not be below the rank of an assistant director and must be resident within the jurisdiction of the court. The case has been adjourned to September 15, 2016 for commencement of trial. Golden Ago, reporting for the Eagle. Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, hereby apologizes to Gabriel Ogebe Daudu, whose picture was mistakenly used on this program on the 4th of May in place of Gabriel Daudu, a former Kogi State House of Assembly member, who was convicted on money laundering charges by the Federal High Court Lokoja on the 25th of April 2016. Mystic was inadvertent, as the Commission has no reason to impugn the hard earned reputation of Gabriel Ogebe Daudu. The EFCC enjoins members of the public to take note. In a similar vein, the attention of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has been drawn to a purported scam email indicating that the EFCC is inviting certain individuals to report to the office of the EFCC regarding a fraudulent transaction. Members of the public should please ignore any message allegedly coming from the EFCC that their banks have sent a report of fraudulent transaction on their accounts. The said mail is not from the EFCC. The public are hereby advised to ignore such messages or report to the EFCC via info at efccnigeria.org or facebook.com forward slash official EFCC or through our hotlines 09 9044571 That's it on the feedback segment. Thank you very much for your comments and contributions. Please don't forget to like our page on facebook.com forward slash official EFCC. You can also drop a comment via the eagle at efccnigeria.org or follow us on Twitter at official EFCC. And to watch our videos, 
just click on youtube.com forward slash official ESCC. That's our package this evening. My name is Aisha Gambari. Thank you for watching and God bless Nigeria. And I am Aisha Mohammed. See you next week, same time on the same station. Goodbye.